A 56-year-old woman was admitted for electrohydraulic lithotripsy of an impacted biliary stone that could not be retrieved by ERCP. An occlusion cholangiogram shows the stone in the middle portion of the common bile duct. Fragmentation of the stone with electrohydraulic lithotripsy requires direct visualization to avoid collateral damage. Therefore, direct cholangioscopy with an ultra-slim endoscope is employed. The endoscope is advanced by the transnasal route and a J-turn is performed in the duodenum so that the tip of the endoscope is positioned on fast with the papilla that is wide open after previous sphincterotomy. Under direct visual and fluoroscopic control, a balloon catheter is advanced freehand into the common bile duct. The balloon is inflated to anchor the catheter inside the duct, and now we advance the endoscope over the catheter into the common bile duct using a ropeway method. Some carbon dioxide is insufflated to optimize visualization in the bile duct. But pay attention, always keep gas insufflation at an absolute minimum because there have been some reports on putative gas embolizations. Now the stone is directly in front of endoscope and we remove the balloon catheter and fill the common bile duct with physiological saline that is infused through the working channel. A four French electrohydraulic lithotripsy probe is inserted and lithotripsy is carried out under direct vision with the tip of the probe touching the stone. Sparks are generated when the foot pedal is pressed. Special care is taken not to activate the probe when the tip is in contact with the bile duct wall. The probe is activated only when it is properly immersed in saline and touching the stone. Here we already notice a big crack within the stone and we do get a fascinating insight into the composition of the stone. For repeated shockwave delivery, the core of the stone is targeted. Because stone fragments and sludge generated during lithotripsy may obscure the endoscopic view, irrigation through the channel of the endoscope helps to maintain a clear view of the stone. At this stage, the large stone is already crushed into dozens of pieces. Stone fragmentation is monitored endoscopically and is also confirmed by fluoroscopy with contrast introduced through the working channel. Once the large stone is fragmented, the ultra-slim endoscope is removed and ERCP is conducted. The stone fragments within the duct are then extracted with a dormia basket and balloon catheters are passed through. At the end of the procedure, another occlusion cholangiography is performed. There are no remnant introductal stones. 
Some air refluxed into the bile duct after the sphincterotomy may mimic stones in the cholangiogram. However, in this case, the dynamics of the air bubbles easily allows us to differentiate them from stones.